Hi everyone, my name is Isuru Samarasingha and I'm a software engineering manager in Crossover. Uh, recently, they did a video testimonial about me and posted it in, uh, in their website. After that, I'm getting a lot of questions uh, asking, a uh, lot of questions about Crossover. Uh, mostly, I'm getting these questions from LinkedIn. So uh, instead of repeating the same thing again and again for uh, all those people, I thought, okay, let's do a video and so that I can share the video URL with anyone who is asking those questions. So in this video, I'll be answering uh, most common 10 questions I get. So the first one is, uh, everyone is asking about the company, how exactly it works. So if you go to the crossover.com website, you will see there are companies like Trilogy, Ignite, Oria. So Crossover is kind of, a, kind of the hiring partner for all those companies. Having said that, those companies are not any outside companies. Uh, crossover is not going to outsource you for any third parties. I think these companies are somewhat interconnected. So uh, that's why, uh, that's what they are hiring for. And I've seen that uh, certain people uh, work in a given company for let's say one year. After that, they get moved to another company. That also happens, but that doesn't happen every week, probably after a year or a couple of years that might happen. Then the second question I get, uh, there are some negative reviews in Glassdoor. Uh, what is my uh, comment about that? So when I joined Crossover, I, I also checked the Glassdoor reviews. Yes, there were some negative, there were some negative reviews, but uh, also I check uh, what is the star rating out of five. It was something, four point something back then. And then I checked the existing company. I was working in Sri Lanka. It didn't even had that uh, uh, star rating which crossover had. Then I thought, okay, why not take the chance and apply it anyway? And after going through the interview process and everything, what I realized was, if someone get rejected, crossover doesn't give you the reasons why you get rejected in the first place. I think that is because they want to maintain the integrity of the hiring pipeline and everything. Because of uh, because they are not giving reasons, uh, a lot of people are applying with very high expectations and even the interviews are hard. Uh, once they get rejected, I think they get really upset and that is one of the reasons there are negative reviews in Glassdoor. So that is what I can say you about the Glassdoor reviews more mainly. Then the next question, third one is, uh, what about the interview process, which uh, positions to apply? So uh, let me share my screen. Like a couple of years ago, I wrote a blog post. This, uh, over. So as you can see in this first article, I have explained this. Uh, interview process here it is pretty much the same even uh, right now so uh, some people are saying uh, when they click on a given link in uh, linkedin uh, sometimes the link is broken so what i would recommend is uh, go to the crossover.com website ah, there you see me and go to the opening job uh, this job openings and uh, filter out whatever the whatever uh, whatever your field here and if possible, try to apply the highest salary as per your requirement. Like if you meet the criteria, go for the highest salary first. So if you still, if you get rejected, still you can apply for a lower salary one. And uh, yeah, the other question I normally get is that uh, about the, what about the CCAT test? As you can see in the blog, uh, CCAT is, is mostly the first test you are going to get regardless of the position. It is uh, applicable for all positions. And for me, it is the toughest one. That is because there's 50 IQ questions. Uh, there's about 10 to 15 English questions as well. You have to apply, uh, you have to answer them within 15 minutes. So for a given questions, you get like 18 seconds. Uh, back in the days uh, for engineering jobs, uh, the pass rate was 35 out of 50. Now that I think it is uh, raised to 40. So, uh, when I say this one is hard, uh, mainly because for non-native English speakers like us, those English questions can be extremely hard, I would say. And uh, then people are asking me what materials I use to practice for this one. So uh, practicing CCAT directly is illegal, but uh, you can buy some IQ books, whatever available in your country, go through them. But in, even uh, if you go through the IQ questions, in order to answer for the English questions, 
you need to have a good vocabulary. So I was studying this book. This one uh, was having a chapter specifically about English vocabulary. There was about 1,500 new words. You can study them. Uh, it will take weeks or maybe months. And uh, once you have studied those close to 1,500 words, I think um, you can score the English questions as well. Keep in mind that uh, try to do the CCAT genuinely as possible because uh, at the end of the interview process, uh, you will be asked to do a proctored CCAT session. So there will be a, prop there will be a person to proctor your test. Uh, uh, the person will ask you to share your webcam as well as the screen. And also uh, another camera will be set up in your side view. So uh, if you are using a calculator or taking someone's help to uh, complete the first round, probably uh, you will be caught in this one. So try to do it genuinely as possible so that you are saving both yours and the crossovers time. So that is mainly about the CCAT test. One thing to note is that uh, even if you get hired, they will ask you to do the proctored CCAT on the very first day uh, of your joining day. So when I join, I ask them if possible, can you reschedule the proctored CCAT beforehand? So if I get passed, I know the job is secured, but if I get rejected, uh, I can still go back to my old position. Then the uh, fifth question I get is, uh, what about the software tracker they are asking you to install? Uh, so yes, they are asking you to install, uh, asking you to install a software tracker in your computer. It is taking screenshots uh, every one minute in all your screens, and every ten minutes they are going to take a webcam, uh, web camera shot, uh, just to make sure you are sitting in front of the computer. And uh, let's say if you are away from the desk. For like 15 minutes, if you are going to take a short break, you don't have to post the tracker because uh, you are going to get paid for those minutes as well. But uh, if you are going out for more than 15 minutes, it is better to turn off the tracker. And for the short breaks, uh, for how many short breaks you can take uh, for a given day, I don't know. But if it is reason reasonable enough, I, do I don't think that it should be a problem because when I'm normally working, I go to refill my bottle and even go to the washroom. I really don't mind, but I'm getting paid for those minutes as well. The sixth question I get uh, is what about the payments and taxes? Uh, let's say if you are working on the first week of January, not the second, but in the third week uh, on Wednesday, they are going to pay, pay you the first week salary to your Pioneer account, and they are going to pay you week by week. And uh, here in Sri Lanka, what I normally do is I collect four weeks of salary and on a very specific date of the month from Pioneer to my Sri Lankan bank account, I'm going to wire transfer the money. Either you can do that or maybe you can request a debit card from Pioneer. You can use that debit card in the ATM machines in your country or you can use it for online purchases. And if you are traveling abroad, you can use that card uh, to do any purchase even in abroad as well. About the taxes, uh, in Sri Lanka, as long as you are getting earned in foreign currency, you don't have to pay taxes. I think the same is applicable for uh, United Arab Emirates as well. But I'm not sure about the other countries. I I'm not going to comment on that. So the seven questions, most important one, uh, what about the work-life balance? So I have been working for Crossover for uh, two and a half years now. The first two years, I was... Uh, working for a specific project. And in that project, we had a huge backlog. So uh, time to time, I remember we did some overtime as well because we wanted to uh, reduce that backlog as soon as possible. Myself and a few of my team members, we didn't mind doing some overtime because uh, our countries were in lockdown mode. Uh, we couldn't go anywhere during the weekend. So uh, since we were staying in home, uh, we did some overtime and also uh, we were getting paid from the same rate for the extra hours we have been working for a given week. And uh, then what about the uh, late night works? For the last two and a half years, uh, only for two days, I worked till 1 a.m. in the morning, only for two days. Uh, that was, we had very specific reasons, I think probably some production issues or something. Other than that, nobody's expecting you to uh, work until late nights. 
with my current team uh, on thursdays i am working till uh, 8 to 9 in my time 8, 9 pm my time because uh, i am having a meeting certain uh, individuals are participating from us and brazil because it is the morning for them that's why on thursday i am working till 9 pm my time other than that uh, if you can decide uh, your time schedule with the manager you are free to work uh, normally in any time uh, during the week uh, as long as your manager agrees then regarding the leaves uh, there are no paid leaves here if you look at the crossover website you will see that uh, you are how they have calculated the annual rate your hourly rate will be multiplied by 40 then uh, there are like 52 uh, weeks in a given year but instead of 52 it has been multiplied by 50 that's how the annual salary is calculated i think the us standard is that uh, a given person is working 50 weeks a year he's taking uh, two weeks of vacation a given year but uh, during my past two and a half years i haven't taken much leave leaves because uh, our country was mostly in the lockdown mode so we couldn't go i couldn't go anywhere but uh, if you are going to take one week of more than one week uh, it is advised to inform your manager at least like one month before but if you are going to take a week, uh, a day or two off uh, it is okay to just inform like day before that is okay but if you can complete your 40 hours within the given week even working on the weekend if required um, you are going to get the same rate paid you don't have to apply any leaves or anything then the eighth question i get is uh, what about the job security so here you are working as a contractor for a us based company i think uh, for a contractor that is a that is common for uh, all countries there's like two weeks of uh, two weeks of notice that is the same for crosso as well and that applies for both sides you can give notice and leave within two weeks i think the same can happen in the other way around so i have been working for last two uh, two and a half years here and i know few people from other country who has been working more than six years now my recommendation is save some backup money because the compensation definitely outweighs the job security. So then what about the technologies we are using here? Mostly we are using a lot of AWS serverless related technologies. Um, I have been working for two teams as of now. Um, in our teams, uh, there were a lot of uh, software architects. We didn't have any QA engineering people in our team. So uh, architects were doing the coding and there were a lot of unit tests and integration tests. Sometimes the engineering manager reviews the code. Sometimes uh, we do the peer review. And uh, normally the codes are in very good quality. We straight away send to the production if required. Then the 10th question is, what about the promotion? For the promotions, you have to go through the hiring pipeline again. Uh, there's kind of a badge system. Let's say your current role, uh, you have scored three out of five for a coding test. And for the promotion, if it requires four out of five, you have to repeat that particular badge only uh, if other badges satisfy the promote promotion requirement uh, you don't have to repeat them again that's how promotions work 